you can sense that there is quite a bit of struggle in being an Indian woman footballer. So the hope is that yes, our journey is a little bit hard. You are choosing a slightly difficult path, but if you don't take it, it will never become easier for the generation to come. So as you can imagine, in England, uh, the season there lasts 10 months. So in one year, you get to play 10 months of football, um, wherein you're training through the week and then there's a match every weekend. So they even, even during pre-season, they organize matches for us. So any player playing at that level plays for 10 months of the year. So you can imagine I was there for three seasons in total, so three years, and I got 30 months of football in just three years. So you can imagine the amount of experience in the um, just the amount I got to grow in those three years. Um, when I came back in 2016, that's the year they announced the Indian Women's League. So up until that point, we didn't have a national league in the country. And in fact, that first season, there wasn't even a quota for foreign players. I didn't get to play that first season. Um, but uh, I think it's a positive step. Uh, and that was the one thing that was missing in, one big thing that was missing was a league in our country for women. Um, and they took that first step in 2016. And ever since it's been growing, as you can see the competition level, the number of teams, the, you know, just the length of the league, everything is sort, sort of getting better and better. Obviously, you can't even compare it with what I experienced in England because 10 months as compared to what I got, what I get to play here is, it's quite a difference. But um, I can't complain because the level is really good. It's getting really good. Um, and as a player, you just want to be challenged. And I think I am being challenged here. Um, and yeah, I think I got I to gotta praise Karnataka, uh, women, like the Karnataka Women Football Association because they're really, really doing a lot, as you can see. Um, and I think that's why, I mean, now Bangalore's become the hub of women's football in the country. Uh, and so I'm enjoying playing this league. Yeah, I mean, the fate of the team isn't looking really good right now, but as a player, you want to be challenged and I think it's happening. So, yeah. There is no lack of talent in this country. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. It exists because of passion. Okay, because there's not a lot of money, there's not a lot of structure, as you can see. It's not like we're engaged at a competitive level for majority of the year. It's a part of the year and even for that, like all of us go all in you know, with like very little income, with very little promise, all those things, but we still are in it. So you can imagine if you actually nurture talent um, and give them that long competitive season, make sure they train, have long, long training camps, all those things. I really think that we have the talent, we have the mindset, we have that breed of players that are willing to give and sacrifice and make football their career. Uh, that they just need, that needs to be harbored and a nice environment needs to be made for them. Um, and if that is created, I really, really think our Indian women's team has the chance to be at least in the top 15, top 20 at least, within the decade, I think. I have a foreign citizenship, right? Uh, and I think that's been a boon and a bane uh, because I think that's what really pushed me to go and then play in England because I wasn't getting to play like for India here. Um, but uh, I tried for three years, once I came back, for three years I actually changed, tried to change my citizenship to an Indian one. But the process is really lengthy, it's really messy. Uh, so after three years, um, the thing is that they started allowing, the Federation started allowing OCI players to play for the state. Uh, as well as I, there was a foreign quota in the league as well. So then I got to play at these two levels at least. When I had just returned in 2016, I, there was no foreign quota in the league. There, I couldn't play for state, so I literally couldn't do much. So now that they've opened up these opportunities, um, and I just want to play, man. I just want to play at a good level, that's all. Um, the, after three years of trying to give up my citizenship from 2016 to like 2019, then I was like, okay, fine. They've opened up opportunities. Let's see how far I can take this. So, yeah. That's the truth. In fact, just yesterday I was telling someone um, because this, this, you can't rely on this to be your income stream. No matter how good you are, you could be a national level player, but you're engaged with the national team only for, let's say, if you're lucky, six months of the year. What are you going to do for the rest six months? You can't live off of, you know, 
off of that money. So um, you need to create other revenue streams as well. It, it's just a thing. Um, and right now, the truth is, no matter how good the level has become, no matter how much the association and stuff supports and provides a structure and everything, it is still to a very large extent a passion. A passion that we are really exercising to the best of our ability. Um, and then every other income stream we have, that money is pumped into our passion. And that's how it's basically surviving. Um, that's sort of what it is. So, um, I think from everything I've said so far, uh, you can sense that there is quite a bit of struggle in being an Indian woman footballer. Um, but I just hope that it doesn't discourage the generations to come. I hope that they see um, whatever little like we've achieved um, and hope to achieve more. Because the idea, the reason why we do everything we do is obviously because we love the sport. And the truth is that, see, like I said to you, I got subbed today. Yes. And I wasn't happy about the sub, but the truth is if it was better for the team, that's what I cared about. If our result was good, I, it wouldn't even have mattered, you know? So um, I truly, truly, I just love the sport. I want the sport to grow. I want more opportunities for women. And if I don't wake up at five o'clock in the morning and train, I can't rely on someone else to do it. You know, I can't be an example for the team, you know. Uh, and so the hope is that, yes, our journey is a little bit hard. You are choosing a slightly difficult path. But if you don't take it, it will never become easier for the generation to come. OK, and we we really, really hope that you do accept that it requires commitment. Um, and any successful person in the world in any career, not just in, not just being a woman, not just being in sport, but you will find resistance, you will find challenges, you will find haters, you will find naysayers. So you, you will never have a flawless journey because then there's no joy of victory, you know? So you have to understand that there will be resistance, there will be uh, moments where you're emotionally down, you're financially not able to support yourself, whatever, but you got to find that reason that passion that commitment and yeah you have to persevere you have to and uh, i think it is slowly growing and hopefully for the generations to come the girls who are coming up now will have a lot more opportunity to play um it's going to get very very competitive over the years and yeah like please reach out to me if you want any support i'd yeah. be happy to yeah. yeah just a big big thank you to bridge for covering this league um i think they're doing a fantastic job i have my friends and parents and family from all over the country tuning in and watching our matches live which is such a privilege for us uh so thank you to the bridge keep going keep supporting us um and do catch all the matches uh and trust me women's football is so underrated and i just hope you get to catch a little bit and you'll know what i'm saying